So I remember a certain Alpha Investments being really proud of investing in Hasbro, as they mentioned in many, many older videos about a year ago. That Hasbro was, you know, he was going to invest in it. I don't know if it's hashtag not financial information, but he seemed to like the direction of the company. He has since recanted. I don't know if he's still buying stock, how much stock he still has. It would always be very interesting if he would make a video as somebody who worked at Wall Street explaining the logic of him buying the stock, how much he's trying to accumulate, Is he has he sold any stock? I don't know. I just know that this stock has performed among one of the worst stocks. You know, Q1, it did okay, but the S&P 500, I believe, was up 17% in Q1, so... In terms of, you know, S&P 500 comparison, no, do not buy Hasbro stock, please. Please, please do not buy this stock, guys. It, I was only down to go. It can only go down. So right now it's 51. The Bank of America dude who's been right all along, he's been predicting basically the stock's demise because of Magic the Gathering. And, I mean, the Dungeons & Dragons movie did really poorly. They, they don't have no IP. I... I conclude that Dungeons and Dragons. So I, I got a lot of feedback from Dungeons and Dragons players when I was making my videos about Cynthia Williams and Big Tobacco and selling cigarettes, you know, to minors or being part of a company that sold cigarettes to minors. And that's not allegedly. That's not defamation. Philip Morris got hit. That there was a court case, and that's what they said they were doing. And. I look at this stock and I say, uh, my God, could it really hit 42 like the dude said? It might. You know, it might. Um, now, there's other reports that Magic is going to do well and it's going to bump up the stock price by 45. I just read another report. I don't think that's a Magic player. I think the guy who's writing the reports from Bank of America is actually a Magic player because he's interviewing game store owners, players. You know, people who buy the product. This is my opinion on Hasbro. They have a lot of really stupid people there. And to do research, the Aaron's and the Gavin's and so on, they don't actually play magic. When I mean play magic, they don't go to your local game store, ask, hey, how is everybody? Because you would see them on Reddit if they did. Meryl has never gone to a local. Cause the first thing people would post on that MTG Reddit, controlled by magic, would be, oh, wow, Mero hit my, Mero attended my local game store last night, and this is a game I played against him. He was so nice, right? Why don't you see none of those posts? Because they never go. They don't play Magic. And this is my biggest concern with the people in charge, is none of them play Magic. And again, what I mean play Magic, I mean sit down, do a pre -release. I did a pre-release. It was fun. Some people recognized who I was. That was not the best. I don't really love that. But it's okay. I'll say I'll be courteous. But yeah, it's um, not what you think it is. Like, I'm trying to explain this in, like, terms that you guys can understand. Not stonks. Not seifu. Do not buy. Rug pull. Okay, hopefully the majority of you Rudy Lights now understand what I'm saying. No moon, no moon. Guys, investing in this stock over the last year, I have never seen anything lose this much money when inflation is up. Most companies make money when inflation is up because that means they can charge more money for their goods, right? With actually lower costs and the cost ever goes down. Hey, well, we established a new price point. Let's keep it. Magic the Gathering, or Hasbro, is one of the only stocks that you would think would be okay today, or over the last year, that has just lost. I mean, basically, it's crypto. <laughs> when you see something lose, how much did this MF lose? What was it? They lost, uh, it's still losing money today. What was it, $89 a year ago? Let me see. Well, it lost 23% six months ago, almost 24%. How much did it lose uh, year to date? It lost 17%, so very bad Q2. 
Yeah, a, a year ago, if you were to buy stock exactly 365 days ago, you would have lost 43%. It was actually very close to $90. It was $89.50. So basically, $90. My God, this is a reserve list card, isn't it? <laughs> That's exactly the amount of money. So if you had a $90 reserve list card... Let's call it, uh, um, I don't know what's $90, what do you guys want? Whatever the $90 reserve list card is, it probably lost 43% over the last year. <laughs> no, actually, no, this is even sadder. Might have effort. This is the same percentage I lost on War of the Spocks and Dominaria Sealed. Oh, I guess, like, so it doesn't affect Rudy Chan that much because he's used to losing this type of money in sealed products. So, no biggie for Rudy. But if you bought a box for $90, 90, $90, you would now, the box would now be worth $51. And that box is called Hasbro stock. Oh, God. People say, oh, the game is fine. The game, well, okay, if the game is so fine, then how the F did this company lose 43% while we're in hyperinflation period? Like, you do realize. Like this, this is like we are on a sinking ship. I typically don't make videos like this the day of, but I, I want, I, I was talking to a friend, actually a client this morning about Hasbro and just marketing. Their marketing is just the worst. You know, I own a marketing agency here in Houston and we went over why Hasbro's marketing was so poor and you know it's it's basically it's very simple they have a demographic the demographic is white cis males they do everything in their power to upset that demographic uh it would be like republicans have a certain demographic and then instead of you know sp sp preaching to the choir you just uh you intentionally make them upset Eventually, they won't vote Republican because they'll be like, no, I'm just so upset about or Budweiser, for instance. Actually, no, I'll use Budweiser. Um, so Budweiser, they had a promotion with a transgender individual called Dylan. Now, Budweiser, Kid Rock, and all the country music, they made a big deal about it. But bars, they, they did lose money. They did lose money. And maybe it's go, go woke, go broke. Um, maybe that's what they're going for right now, but eventually they're going to have to sell magic because they can't hold on to it. I, I think that point is going to come out in the next six months where they're they're right now they're dumping transformers, which is a crazy, right? They're looking to sell transformers and other IP properties. And I know cause I'm an IP attorney. They're looking into it right now. They're investigating how much the IP is worth. Uh, how much somebody would pay for it. And they're going to sell it to China. They're going to sell I, I think I know who's going to buy it in China. Uh, there's a big company called Tencent. And they have uh, they would probably be interested in it. Transformers at least. Because Transformers is pretty popular in China. I grew up with Transformers even when I was in China. We had like our own version of it. But like you know it's a kind of knockoff version. And here's my point. My point is. When your stock can set, and I can look at five years, whatever you want. When your stock price cons consistently drops in price, and the people are saying, the, re the analysts are saying it's going to drop even more from 52, 51 to 42, which is, like you said, a 19, 20% drop. You don't change what you're doing. You're, you don't look around and say, wait, who's been here a long time? And who's been part of this? Oh, Aaron, Mero, all these new you know individuals. Oh, okay, I forgot. Back to the uh, the Budweiser thing. When you have a demographic and they're willing to buy your product and because you're you know, go woke, go broke, you do everything in your power to piss off that demographic, guess what? They no longer buy your product. And the people that you are advertising towards, right, this new hip generation they were never going to buy your product anyway. They're, they're very vocal. They're very loud, right? But they don't got no money because they're on OnlyFans begging for money. So the people with money, me, Jeremy Hambly, even Alpha Investment, we ain't going to buy this shady product no more. I have been without a magic distributor for 
at least, you know, I, that's why I've been buying shit from Walmart <laughs> at retail. And you might have to go, oh, that's even worse, but not at the quantities, guys. I refuse to sell Magic cards. That's not good for them. That's not good when I tell my distributor, no, nah, I don't want to carry it. Whatever I'll buy, I'll buy from Amazon. I'll go to Walmart if I feel like just, you know, opening some stuff. Because it's no longer the mass openings I would do or the mass things I would be selling. And none of my friends and all of them are, they're worth at least a million. Some of them worth over $10 million. They don't, outside Lord of the Rings, which is a different type of IP, completely different IP, no one is buying Magic cards right now for my friends. And that is, should be very scary for them because we have the money. We have the money. And when you cater toward the demographic who will not buy your cards and are poor as shit, and you upset the demographic with the money, with the jobs, working, 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 want to sit down, play a game of magic, and not have to deal with some of the politics, if you will, then, yeah, you're going to get a major... I, I think magic will die. And if you think I'm wrong, well, look at this stock. Like... How can, if Magic is doing so well, guys, how can the parent company, which everyone says is very dependent on Magic doing well, be losing this much money? I don't know if you guys know stocks that well, but this type of decline is not normal. Most stocks have done fairly well. I give Joe Biden a little bit of credit for that, you know, but anyway. Bye, guys.